first to the editor of this book, Robert Ellison. Thank you. wonderful to win this, this particular prize, the, the Blake Prize. William Blake was one of the first poets that really seized my imagination. I hadn't looked at poetry or thought about poetry after I left school for at least 10, 12 years. Finally I picked up a, a book of Blake and thinking, oh well this, there might be some something interesting in this. I didn't know who he was even really. and. Uh, I didn't know anything about him. But I started reading a poem called The Auguries of Innocence. And that's the one with all these incredible uh, couplets in it, like uh, uh, the, the wild deer wandering here and there keeps the human soul from care. And that's got to see the world in a grain of sand, heaven in a wildflower, to hold eternity in the palm of your hand. All those amazing couplets. and. I didn't actually know these terms or words, but what had happened was I'd finally discovered poetry rather than verse. You know, it was, it was deep poetry. It was something fascinating about it that, that, that I didn't quite understand, but subliminally I knew this was the real stuff. First of all, it starts with a quote from Emily Dickinson. My worthiness is all my doubt. Emily Dickinson, a poem without birds. This morning the tree ferns woke and opened out as sunlight dispersed a thick mist. This morning in a memory incised with old phrases, mouthing words then uttering a sentence with your unfinished breath. Banana trees rustle. A first breeze arrives bringing the perfumes of the ebb. Watermarks down on the mud flats begin to evaporate. Morning turns its back on the sun, then gradually night arrives. In the skylight, stars appear through the smoke screen of a burn off. Brilliant pinholes. Stars are clustered trees hung in the night sky. Whose body, whose eyes look up? into the heavens, the problem of suffering expands forever. Dust and light again, maybe time, if it exists. I thought, well, I guess it's to do with a meditation on the soul, on what, what a soul is. And, uh, and I, I wrote a book called The Clean Dark um, 20 years ago, and uh, and I had the idea of, of a, clean, a clean darkness, which was um, uh, like a po something positive in the dark rather than a negative. I, tried, I wanted to show, I wanted to ex sort of show that darkness isn't necessarily a, um, a totally negative thing. And there is also um, lots of examples of poets that have written about this. There's no novellus um, poems about the night, hymns to the night. Uh, there's lots of po poets that have written about the, the night and um, I wanted to think about night, light, dark and soul. So, you know, they're such, they're such um, loaded things. So, so it becomes heaven and hell um, and all, all the things between. The second part is called A Preliminary Sketch. And again, a, a quote from Emily Dickinson. What I see not, I better see. An old shack by the river, deserted for years now. Haunted by mesh nets and anchor rope. Wild apple trees grow out the back. A charcoal sketch of this scene unfurls before me. On a sheet of mist, I push aside tough vines of morning glory, then walk on into the drawing. It's difficult to move in this landscape, and I have forgotten the names of most flora and fauna. Cross-hatched charcoal enfolds me. 
I would go, I would go to um, Sunday school from a very early age, maybe five, and it was, it was within walking distance of our house in Neutral Bay, and so I would walk to church, and sometimes mum would come, and sometimes I'd go by myself, and it was... It, it was called a kirk, even in those days. And it's a beautiful little little church. It's still there in Yeo Street, Neutral Bay. Mm. But the ministers were so fierce, and so um, it, it used to puzzle me. Um, I used to, what I was meant to do, it was no matter what you did, you, you were doomed. It, like, work was the only way you'd be saved from any kind of... Work was the only way you'd be... The, um, you'd get praise, basically. And even then, you weren't sure that that would lead to um, any kind of spiritual engagement. I rejected the lessons and feared my mother's God, the Christ I couldn't believe in. The friends in those days, the ones I loved, are now drawn beside me in the margins. The kirk we attended appears the place where the minister refused to tell me exactly what a soul might be, although mine, come judgment day, would be flung into hell along with the others who weren't chosen. The Presbyterian soul is not mysterious, rather it's something we were lumped with. Now I rise from the sketch, my face smeared with ink from years of sinning, back on the river, my boat ploughs through the fog. I'm looking hard. What form, shape or song might represent a soul? What words, paint or mud, resemble such an intangible glow? A stain of mist hangs above a black butt, brushed by the wings of a grey-headed flying fox. (laughs) 